we have to talk about the piece de resistance and when our in i just want to touch on it so the people who are checking out the show don't think i'm being a honey dick most of you are aware that um tony hinchcliffe was recently on steve-o's podcast right steve-o wild ride and they were talking about all things concerning stand-up comedy and all that sort of good stuff i'm sure most of you are aware of that kind of thing whenever tony hinchcliffe gets on these sort of shows it usually devolves into a topic around you know stand-up and all that sort of stuff and it gets a little bit boring which is why i usually kind of stay away from any of these interviews because they get very inside baseball very minutial and all that sort of stuff i'm not really a big fan of it but this little clip that's gone viral it was shared all over social it was shared on the subreddit someone shared it on my discord it's gone absolutely flipping nuclear was this wild exchange between um what's his face between hinchcliffe and steve-o where they essentially really rag on and giggle at flipping brendan shaw and his special the gringo papi i'm gonna play it now because i think it's absolutely hilarious then i'm gonna play the full clip for you from the youtube that gives you a bit of context as to what they was talking about because i really want to get an understanding of what's going on i saw the clip i really to get more context to it so let's play the actual little clip where they're laughing at brendan and then i'll play the full clip to get the context this is really funny and also oddly enough without being hyperbolic this is a little bit no without any hyperbole not being hyperbolic jesus too much brendanism <laughs> without too much hyperbole this is definitely one of those turning points because i don't think anybody else in these positions that they're in in tony hinchcliffe and steve would have said this if brendan's stock within the jre extended universe had not dwindled because i feel like it has dwindled somewhat which is why all these comedians are feeling comfortable to say what they say my theory goes that Kalil and Ali are the ones who sacrificed themselves and the other girl um, Liza Schlesinger, Liza Schlesinger, the little one I think it's Eliza, I forgot her name, all those three girls are the ones who sacrificed themselves in order to allow all these men to have the bravery to come out and say something because before Kalila, Annie and the other short girl said something about Brendan no one was brave enough to say it in public no one said it, not yeah Esther, Esther, Esther Pavinsky, sorry, not, not, not Eliza, fucking hell, I get all these little white girls mixed up um, Esther, those are the heroines, they're the brave ones they're the ones that deserve the prize because before they said anything, no one actually said anything, they all kind of were whispering things and not mentioning names and writing stuff on paper that little little girls ironically enough anyway this is the clip featuring steve-o and tony hinchcliffe giggling and laughing at brandon schub's demise which is absolutely hilarious to see and then i'll play the other clip that gives a bit more context let's go really easy no airport in the arlington where gringo poppy was filmed Wait, is that where is that where <laughs> that was filmed? Is it the, the the Dallas Improv Arlington? I think so. Yeah, that's where Gringo Poppy was filmed. Oh, no, Dude, tough act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man how do you know that how do you know that was filmed there um, I was fascinated by the entire <laughs> <laughs> I even know where the construction paper came from <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I even know who cut it out <laughs> oh my god it's so funny yeah, <laughs> we all are. We're all very fascinated about it. It was fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just like, I'm particularly close to that because of the known for other things coming into stand up. Like, um, first special on Showtime, you know, yeah. and then like uh, putting out the second special on, on you know, yeah. on your own. 35 minutes. 25. It wasn't really. It was 25. Oh. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yeah. interesting. It's like uh it's like death by a thousand self inflicted paper cuts or something it's, like yeah, that. Yeah. It it's it's pretty intense. Um but yeah, like so so I was particularly, you know, it's like ah uh, and, and I I don't know, I just <laughs> I, I care a lot. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I love Steve-O's face throughout the entire process, especially towards the end. He's obviously really smiley and laughy and enjoying the moment of him telling the joke. But then towards the end, because he's a legitimately, I think, nice person who's seen the depths of darkness, who's been at the wrong place, he definitely knew that maybe going there was maybe bad and could end up, you know, really fucking up Brendan's mood and just as a maybe of a shitty thing to say. Kind of, I felt like felt a bit bad for saying it towards the end. His face kind of changed a little bit. It was a bit more demure. But overall, it's really interesting what they're talking about because in 
in general this is maybe or this is definitely in my opinion a confirmation of what everything we have been saying on the fucking final kids subreddit for years people have been saying on this sort of stream that i've been talking about for ages for the longest time possible and the thing that's really funny about this whole situation when it comes to gringo papi and the flipping youtube and all that sort of you know death by a thousand self-inflicted cuts is that this stuff doesn't actually matter in the long and short of it it doesn't actually matter it really 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 doesn't but i feel like the reason why this matters more is that brendan was the one who was going out of his way to try and make himself seem bigger than what he actually was that was a weird thing about it he went out of his way to really make it known that hey i'm this big star comedian guy and i'm selling out all these places and i deserve to have this showtime special and i'm working harder than you guys i've clearly got something more special here blah 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 and to the point where when he did get kicked off of showtime or he ended that partnership or whatever happened and then he didn't get that second special on any big major network or streaming service and he put it up on youtube he still tried to spin it as if he's the one that told netflix amazon comedy central wherever it may be no i'm gonna do it myself and i'm gonna bet on myself when clearly the first option was always to get on the streaming platform because for that validation but he tried to make it seem as if he was really big balls which is always really disturbed me and i feel like for the most part that's why the fucking homeless cats on the fire and the kids subreddit they go out of their way to try and disprove him because he always tried to sell a lie and i've actually got a patreon out at the moment so definitely check out my patreon i guess to uh, patreon.com for just like Christina, where i talk about the art of lying and i go through some compilation where he basically says all these lies and i feel like in general that's basically been one of his major achilles heels is the fact that he lies and he embellishes and he tries to make himself look bigger than what he is when clearly we all know the truth r.i.p to draco and people go out of their way to disprove his lies so when he did all this stuff about he not even refused all the networks people knew looking at the special and how it was produced that clearly this wasn't of the level that any flipping network would accept in the first place so clearly you were lying and then when he put out the special it was 30 minutes and it wasn't even 30 minutes of jokes it was maybe 24 22 when you discount the intro and the outro and all that nonsense and him coming on stage it was absolutely obscene you couldn't even manage to do a 30 minute special all in four you had to do 27 minutes and most of it was the most hacky terrible comedy i've ever seen in my entire life most people would agree with that even if you're not you know if you kind of put your bias and agenda maybe to one side that's the major part of it and then on top of it you think about steve and you think about his background and you think about what was happening towards the end of jackass and the fact that maybe jackass was maybe it was getting a bit boring it was getting a bit try hard he was obviously getting a bit older he couldn't necessarily put his body through the same level of pain and whatever else he was doing before when he was younger and clearly he was fixing up his life outside of jackass in terms of getting sober and all that malarkey it made sense that he tried to go into st stand-up comedy because he needed an out he needed a way an avenue to kind of generate money it didn't involve him basically putting his body at risk anymore cool he tried to do that then he goes into stand-up comedy Comedy and clearly it doesn't work the way he wanted it to work he kind of starts off a bit shit he starts off a bit obscene he starts off trying to do like jackass on stage all these type of things happen and he eventually has to get to a point where he starts to respect the craft again what he did that brendan didn't do is that he legitimately tried to become a student of the game he went back to the drawing board and he started to get educated on how to put bits together how to present himself better on stage, where to go and get time, all this sort of stuff. And he eventually got to a point where now he's a legitimate stand-up comic to the point where other peers in the industry are definitely crediting him for the work that he did and how he's doing it the right and correct way. And that's where Brendan fucked up. To this day, I still don't know why Brendan did it that way. I don't know why he decided to basically go through it in a way where he didn't do many open mics he didn't try and perform in front of crowds that weren't his own and he just started doing stand-up and he's still doing stand-up the same way basically it's kind of like he's doing a live tfat k because he's only performing to his own fans he doesn't ever go and do like a show with random people on the lineup and just do it for the sake of it he only presents or mostly performs only at his own shows and i feel like that's what essentially fucked him up in the long run and obviously he's an ability to be funny he maybe doesn't have good writers around him maybe doesn't bother trying to hire them or pay them whatever it may be doing but in general all of those refusals to do things the normal traditional way that everyone else has done it has basically put in position now where he's playing catch up trying to fix himself now but it's too late it's too late because why would you bother trying and perform in front of crowds that aren't yours if you're doing well selling tickets for people that do like it he's not selling tickets well who knows but just in general just just run for the exercise why bother doing that if you can make a quick buck just playing for your own crowd and playing to home base it makes no sense to try and go out there and try and put yourself through pain just for the sake of it to appease some you know comedy purist but if he wants to his career to get better if he wants to actually improve in his comedy that's what he would actually go and do but he hasn't done that in forever 
forever in a long 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 time so that's basically where i kind of see where steve-o was able to see oh shit i could have ended up like a brendan if i started to believe my shit doesn't stink or if he did believe his shit didn't stink back then and didn't take the advice from maybe some you know really legendary people in the industry maybe he could have ended up like sure and obviously his trajectory the fact that they both had showtime specials and the fact that the second special and how that went both of them definitely varied and went in different directions and career prospects and how he's loved and adored in the industry and all that sort of stuff impacted it but in general i found this really illuminating and clearly for me this definitely showed that brendan's stock within that little jre extended universe has definitely dropped somewhat maybe considerably to the point where maybe it's never going to get back to where it was before in the past because i don't think five years ago you would have never heard anybody within that little clique of people saying or laughing or basically calling him out directly as they did in any way shape or form they would have never done they would have never dared because they knew what rogan would have come down like a ton of bricks or brenda would have used the you know the association with joe as a fear tactic to make sure people don't talk bad about him so the fact that people are talking like this is clearly an evidence that that guy's stock has dropped considerably and the fact that fucking tony hinchcliffe was laughing hysterically with his eyes flipping rolling back into his head and whatnot for me is also proof that he is definitely because these comedians as well they're worse than us people think we're bad right we're only here laughing at these guys who are way more successful than us right living this amazing rich lifestyle we're pointing and laughing all their mistakes but i legitimately think especially male comedians they are the most gossipy backstabby bunch of people ever so i don't 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 ever ever i don't ever um deny myself in my head that these guys aren't in the green room gossiping and bickering about these guys and kind of commenting and saying how bad this guy is how did he do? no 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 i legitimately 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 think that these guys are talking about each other you know in the green room constantly so the fact that they bring up on podcasts is definitely one of those and they laugh like this definitely shows me that they're talking about them behind the scenes because it's stuff that they would never dare to talk about in public but they know they're doing it in the green rooms that's that face how when's the last time you've seen tony hinchkin laugh like that for real his whole face is red he's absolutely heaving he knows that's the thing that you shouldn't say it's the big elephant in the room and flipping you know fucking <laughs> what's his face <laughs> steve-o set that up brilliantly what an absolute brilliant <laughs> brilliant bit and if you're brendan you're definitely going to be feeling sad sipping your tiger cum whiskey listen to that for sure 100% sure